Okay, let me show you what we're actually doing today. I am going to be walking you through how I did this pillow right here. This was a pillow sham that was brought to us by one of our customers, and she wanted her um, daughter-in-law's name stitched across the front as big as we could get. And honestly, I didn't go as big as I could. I um, am using our jumbo frame or our largest frame, this one, um, which is a 360 by 200 millimeter. But on my design, I only sized it for 300 by 200 millimeters, which is... Um, you know, it's still a really good size. I mean, this is still a great size for this pillow. I used uh, a velvet on this with a nice wide satin stitch. Oh my goodness. And it is so, like, it just, it just screams luxury to me, right? Does that not look luxurious? Um... Actually, the customer that brought these by called me this morning and was like, Hey, can I still pick up tomorrow? Like, Absolutely. Um, like, I should have them done to, for you today. And she even asked, like, does it look good? Oh, <laughs> your daughter-in-laws are going to love these. So, anyway, that is that. So, I'm going to show you how I do this one. Um... And this one is actually done a little bit different because all the letters are cut out. That one that I did earlier, the letters aren't cut out. And, you know, I'd like to tell you that I'm perfect <laughs> and I do videos because I'm so perfect and, you know, I just make it look easy. My craft is easy. But no, no, I messed up. And that's why my letters are cut. Okay, so so I was interrupted by a telephone call, and I um, decided to put lipstick on. But this, do you see this? This is what happens when you have children who like to play in your stuff. So, oh wow. Oh. You want to see this? Isn't that such a cute little pouch? This is from Dillard's. This is one of the um, events that we did for Dillard's. And they gave me this little sample bag. And I just embroidered my last initial on it. So I want to tell you guys that just because it's not cloth doesn't mean that it can't be embroidered. So this is actually like a heavy vinyl backed by cloth. But it turned out so cute. And look at this little zipper. And the pocket still works. So, anyway. What I did, I got this pillow on the machine. And I actually used my hoop. Which, if you have been watching me for any length of time, you know that my go-to thing to use are my fast frames. And I decided that I was going to hoop this one. And it actually, like, I didn't have it tightened enough. And it fell during the satin stitch, or during the, um, yeah, during the first start of the satin stitch. And so I picked every single stitch out, which, you know, wasn't too bad. It's not bad if you have the correct stabilizer and your stitches aren't so teensy tiny. okay? So... Um, we're going to redo this pillowcase, and it's going to look even better than before, and it's going to go faster for me because these are already pressed, or um, cut out. So here's the beauty of um, velvet. I, I did my velvet pieces just like I do any other applique piece, okay? But the difference with the velvet is you have to use a, low, a little bit lower temperature on your iron, and you also have to use um, a Teflon mat or a, or like a special cloth or like a, like a pillowcase or something 
to keep it from being directly onto the velvet. And you're going to iron from the back side and not the front side because we want this to stay nice and soft and luxurious. And if that iron gets onto these little fibers, it's just going to melt and you're not going to have anything that's pretty. So um, I pressed it with my Wonder Under. I use a lightweight Wonder Under now. Um, in previous videos before, I've always used uh, like a heat and bond light, but I found that it was just too heavy still and it sounded too much like plastic. I didn't like that and I didn't like my kids wearing them and it made them hot and sweaty. So this is a Wonder Under. It is um, lots of fibers that are kind of like laid all over the place. There's no grain to it and it makes a beautiful applique piece because you can cut right up to the stitch right up to that stitch line on your uh, machine and um, I'm just setting my pieces to the side and there's hardly any fraying and that's what I like I I am a fray check like a holic and so when I see other people's embroidery work or pictures like I zoom in or like I like get really close and I look at their applique shirts or even their monogram shirts, their applique, their little, you know, applique monogram thing. I look hard and I think it's just because that's my craft. It's my trade and that's what I do. So yeah, don't be one of those people. <laughs> prep your fabric. Prep it, prep it. It only takes a minute or two. Okay, I'm going to scoot everything over to the side and my stuff is a disaster, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. Let's do this. You are looking at my large frame or my large hoop. Okay, both sides. I am using a 12 inch sheet of um, cutaway stabilizer and then I have my pillow. Okay. Now, what I was just looking at was where the tag was on the other pillow because I want these to be consistent. So the tag is on the left hand side. So I wanted it to be on the left hand side. Um, you can do this several different ways. Um, you can either fold your product and la la, there's your center. Um, or you can actually draw your lines. I don't like drawing my lines, but I used a wax wax um, to draw my center point here. And you can barely see it, but I will go over it with an, a hot iron. And just instead of touching it to the material, I'll just kind of hover over it and let that wax dissolve. We've been using a lot more wax now that we um, do alterations at our shop. So I just have that on hand. Okay, I'm going to open this up. There's my center crease. And this is a 14 inch. So I can pretty much put that center mark like right there. But there's my there's my seven inches. This is 26 inches, so 13. Okay, and there is my center. Okay, there's my center. I'm going to slide this in, and it is, it's going to just kind of hover right here. I'm not going to extend over that. It's a 12 inch design. And so I'm just going to center this up as best as I can, get some on 
the edge of, my, of each side of the hoop and then I'm going to put my top on I am uh, holding down, I'm using my arm to like hold down my fabric and push down. But if that makes you uncomfortable, you don't have to do that. Um, there's still some give to it. Could I loosen it up? So once it's in here, you don't want to pull on anything. Otherwise, it will look distorted when it comes out and it'll it'll all go back to the center. So if you find that it's still a little too loose, pop it back up, straighten it out, pull it, and then snap the top of the hoop again. All right, so let's take this to the embroidery machine. Okay, now we're going to put this on the machine, open side. Sorry. Okay, now I'm going to just move things around. I'm going to rotate my design close that okay I'm gonna try this here but if the vibrations get to be too much I'll have to move you guys but we'll see so the first step is the placement stitch this out and I'm going to show you whoa, how I line these up. We're going to start with that letter K because it's really close. Okay, so at this point we lay our pieces down and the backing kind of grabs kind of grabs at the fabric underneath okay Okay, all my letters are in place, and now I'm going to take it to my iron and kind of tack it down. I thought that you actually might want to see this. So, not sure if you do, but I'm going to run with it. Oops, sorry. There we go. Okay, so I have my, my applique pieces. They're already backed. Okay. I'm going to lay them right on the dotted lines. The first, the first stitch, I, and you most likely already know this, but the first stitch is called a placement stitch because that's where you're going to place your, your, um, your applique pieces. And then the second stitch, once it's, once it, our fabric is down, it's called a tack down stitch. So now... We're going to pretend that we laid our fabric down. <laughs> I This is a Teflon mat, and I am just putting some pressure. I'm holding it. St 
still giving it a few seconds because we just need it to tack down and I don't want to I don't want to slide the iron back and forth because then it may displace our fabric pieces yeah. Ta oh that looks good you can kind of see my stitches from yesterday oh, I could not believe that I messed up on that oh I was so frustrated okay so these are tacked down they're not going anywhere so now we're going to go do our satin stitch so proud of her okay I'm kind of take it that angle slide this back in and I actually don't need another I don't need the tack down stitch because I already have it stitched out. I mean it's perfectly placed but I'm gonna going to go ahead and do it just because now I'm still trying to work on placement sorry guys now I'm not going to film this entire thing because it's going to take 45 minutes and I'm just not going to do it but I will stitch I mean I will show maybe the first letter now it's just doing the tack down stitch See how close I got. Ugh, take it out a little bit. Looky there. Pretty darn good. Like I cut really close to my stitch lines because I don't like anything peeking out the side. But I could cut that out. But yeah. That's, I mean, it's insanely close. All right, we're gonna do the satin stitch now. Woo. Whoa. Watch that for a few minutes after it does. Okay guys, here it is. Look at that. Now Cami has a nice pillowcase. Okay. So there are some differences whoa, with um, this one that I didn't do with the other one. Or you know, I did more with the other one. On the other one, I laid down a water-soluble stabilizer. On this one... I actually didn't and I think it's still stitched out really well the satin stitch um, is still on top the reason why you would want to lay a water soluble stabilizer down is to give those stitches um, like a boost up so they don't sink down into I can't tell what you guys can see there we go but anyway does that look good okay now on the inside I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to cut a box around it because it is a pillow sham. It's not going to be worn. And still cutting fairly close to the stitches, but not so close. Okay. Stay on the other side. There we 
go. And it's done. Oh, that looks so good. What do you guys think? Do you like that? I'm still trying to work this little, little tripod thing. So I think that looks cute. Pretty darn cute. And I love this buffalo plaid. Alright, so I'm going to zip that up. And it's ready for my customer to come by and pick up and all the cute stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will check you in the next one.